Prosper in the morning. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> you made me laugh. All right, yes, welcome to yet another uh, exciting 30 minute episode of um, the Lunch and Learn with Prosper. And today we have none other than Troy. Troy, I just put a small picture of you there so that everybody sees you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what, was that? what was that? There we are. I got a little bit of lag on this. <laughs> All right. Okay. So obviously, guys, as, as I have uh, put through already, uh, Troy is a digital nomad and is having a fantastic time out there in Bali. So I am going to apologize in advance if our connection is not going to be the best, but I really want you to listen to this because Troy is going to help us with a lot of clarity. Troy is going to help us with creating and gathering confidence or putting our message out there. Troy, man, how are you going? I'm doing great, man. Uh, the connection, but you know, I'm doing great. Um, I think it's between our Australian connection and our Balinese connection. They're just coming to get the best one. But uh, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing really good today. <laughs> you know, you know, as a, as a digital nomad, you probably put your uh, laptop in the sand and now it's cramping and it's not working perfectly on. <laughs> you were at the beach and then it got water splashed on it. Obviously, Troy, uh, I mean... What's that? I was just saying, the people that are watching this show today, man, um, you know, these people have been sort of either following me for a while and they've also been following you. Uh, per se, and what actually, um, you know, comes to their mind is there are people that are always trying to bring their message out there. It's people that have a business Absolutely. and they want to make it profitable and enjoyable. What would you sort yeah. of advise somebody who's just starting off um, as in what's the first thing they should really, really do online or how should they bring their message out there? Yep, Absolutely. Well, I think a really big skill, and that's the reason I, I put together a book recently on this, but a really big skill for any entrepreneur is to understand the marketing. And a big thing of your marketing is your writing and your communication. And if you're working online or you're shooting videos, whatever you're doing needs to be a clear, concise message and delivered to the right person in the right fashion with all sorts of different techniques and strategies that you can use mixed with your own voice and message. Like there's a big structure, I believe, to writing that a lot of people, you can just write and write, but at the same time too, if you follow a structure that has psychology ingrained in it, I think it really, how do I say this? It really helps you in the long run, just effectively communicate the pains, the problems, the different things that are actually going on in your market. All right, cool, cool. I think I think we're getting a bit of feedback, but it's it's all good. Anyway, and also, I mean, the connection is not going to be the best, but yeah, guys, I mean, ask your ask questions. Your ask some same set of questions, my friends. Uh, Paul is saying ha ha. Sean Corley is saying hello. Rebecca is saying hello. Jimbo is saying, my man, good evening from Silicon Valley. Good on you, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. What's going on? Right. So obviously. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, the goal for every digital marketer and online business owner is to actually get more clients and get more customers yeah. and pretty much be on the offense to generate more revenue and grow their online business. Okay. And as you as you have explained, that no yeah. matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you really just gotta be out there. Now, what what else is is there that people should be doing? Um, is it different channels or is it different emails? I, I we just want to hear how your process works. Absolutely. Well, there's a couple different ways. I really like actually how you brought this up because a lot of people, and I know you really you really go off on this as well quite frequently. But a lot of people really want to focus on client getting, which is super great. But I really think a big shift a lot of entrepreneurs should make is really serving the people that they have on a deeper level. Obviously, you still need to generate leads and you still need to communicate to your audience and like warm up your audience, you know, be actually personable with them and open a conversation with them. But at the same time too, really delivering what you've said that you'll deliver, I think is a really huge thing because some of your best business is going to come from referrals. 
some of the easiest, most convertible business will come from other people sending other people your way. And you don't have to do the multiple touch points like online. On average, I think it's anywhere between six and 16 touch points be before somebody considers even working with you. Whereas if you get a referral from somebody, I really believe that the referral, you can honestly do one or two touch points and you can have somebody bought into whatever it is that you're offering at the time being. So I really think serving the people that, that you have is amazing to do. And also at the same time too, um, I think that answered the question. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> of course it did. Well, I mean, there's, there will be quite a lot to talk about. So you're talking about six to 16, did you say, touch points? Um, yeah, I think on average, that's the number. Okay, so sorry, as you would know, let's say I've just started, okay? All I have is a laptop and I don't yeah. have the resources to reach out to people six to 16 times. What can I yeah. leverage? that would um, you know, constitute me actually putting up my message there without suffering a lot of burnout. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think knowing what your offer is is really huge, uh, knowing what it is that you're actually offering. Because I mean, straight up, if you just have a laptop and you don't know what it is that you're offering or selling, then that's going to be a huge pitfall for you. You can have, you don't have to be the best at writing if your offer is completely irresistible. But if you're great at writing and you have an irresistible offer that you can put together, then I think that's a really base point that somebody should start at, whether they're starting online, whatever they're doing. Um, your offer is almost everything. Like, and that also comes with putting the scarcity on it, putting the value bill, putting the actual payment plans, the guarantee. I think one big thing that a mentor told me not too long ago is that anybody can afford the red Ferrari on payments. So when somebody goes into a Ferrari dealership to go buy a Ferrari, they don't buy cash generally. They're generally put onto a payment plan of whatever it be per month. A lot of people online are going for, they want to go in for the kill and they want somebody to pay everything up front, which is understandable. But I mean, figure out a model that you can get somebody on payment plans that's more reasonable, that you can serve more people. You can still build yourself an amazing foundation. And from that point forward, you can actually gain access to a lot more people because the barrier of entry appears to be lower. Whereas if you hit them with, say, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but often if you hit somebody with a huge price tag of, say, you know, 10 grand or 20 grand, they're going to be, oh, holy crap, they're going to gas. They're going to be taken back a little bit. But at the same time, if you can present the same package in more of a monthly basis or whatever that be strung out over a longer period of time, I think it's a lot easier for somebody to acquire clients that way. Okay, so are you saying that all those cars in my backyard are not paid for? <laughs> well, you haven't taken me for a ride yet, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you do touch up um, in your new book, uh, Writing That Sells. And if anyone is really interested in getting a copy of that PDF, please just type in in the comments there, writing that sales. You touch up a lot of things about copywriting formulas and a sales process. What we're going to yeah. do right now is let's just get back to the audience a little bit and then I'll get you to answer Absolutely. these questions. Absolutely. Okay. Now the audience is asking, first of all, there's Hati. Hati, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, hey. Hati says, hey guys, what's the best way to start up a business in marketing? How can we target people in advertising? So, Troy, I would think that you want to grab this one first. Can you, can you say the last piece of that again? Uh, the last piece says, um, how can we target people in advertising? So, just so I'm right, uh, getting this right, so she wants to work with people that are already in advertising? Okay, so so this is somebody who's starting a business. Um Okay, I think I think maybe Hati, your question question is, hey guys, what's the best way to start up a business in marketing, and how can we target people advertising? So maybe what I can say is, Hati, um, first of all, maybe you really need to figure out who your target audience is going to be, and you also need to figure out what are you going to be serving with, and who is actually going to care about that pro, pro, uh, product. 
So you want to figure out what your customers' frustrations are and go in and solve those problems. But you have to be specific on who you're targeting, okay? Um, I have something interesting to add to that with the mixture of avatar because I find a lot of people online too, um, a lot of people get really confused trying to set up their avatar and they want to get right. it exactly perfect. But like it is right. never going to be perfect. It's going to be it's going to be educated and adequate towards what it is that you're doing. I think when you really start getting clear on your customer avatar is when you start working with people. So I think getting yourself, obviously, yeah, you want to target people, but never discount the actual possibility of doing business in person with people as well. Because some of my best deals have came from personal relationships and not people that have came online. I still get people through online business as well. But I think when you're starting out too, it's really important to get in the trenches because you're going to actually really understand what's going on with these people. And you're going to understand the people that you don't like, because you can build a completely perfect customer avatar that is a customer that you hate. And it's somebody that you don't want to work with. And, but you don't know that until you start working with them. So, I mean, and that, that was a big experience, the way that I was actually building branding packages before I was just targeting anybody and everybody based on what I thought. And after working with them, I realized that like, I need to consult them a lot more first before I actually bring them to the branding end of things. So I don't know if that really helps, but obviously being clear, like Prosper said, but at the same time too, not allowing getting your customer perfect to get into the trenches and actually start talking and communicating with people, how you can solve their problems and pains and their fears and frustrations. Great stuff. Um, I think Troy, maybe you would have noticed lately um, the kind of stuff that I do on my page where I'm actually really, you know, getting to know who is in my space so that I can provide them with the utmost value. And that's the reason why we bring people like yourself that can also contribute, yeah. um, you know, to, to, to people's well-being, to their businesses and to make them um, profitable and enjoyable. Right. So what I have also noticed here is... Um, you you do have a book that you've just written, which is writing that sales. Do you want to yes. just talk about that a little bit and let, let us know um, what 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 you've got in store for us there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll just kind of tell you a quick little story about it. Um, I mean, I've been in the marketing space for quite some time, and I didn't really notice the power of writing until it was about two or three months ago. So. We were, in, uh, we were in a different town out here. We were going scuba diving. It for my birthday. And we had an apartment for rent in Vancouver. And we were paying for rent in Bali. We were paying for rent in Vancouver. And we were both sitting there. Me and my girlfriend were like, okay, we have to get this apartment rented. Like, I'm a marketer. I can figure out how to get this apartment rented. I've never specialized in renting apartments before. But I was like, okay, this is interesting. So... You know, I went around, I stumbled across a couple different formulas, and one of the ones I included in the book, it's from Dan Kennedy, like, I don't claim rights to any of these formulas in the book, it's just an accumulation of different things that I found over time with my spin on it. Anyways, so I found this formula, I knew that the pain point in Vancouver was people couldn't find a house to rent for not very, like, it was extremely expensive to find a house to rent. And on top of that, the deeper pain was that you'd get a really small place for what you pay for and the solution was that you can rent our place it's a big place and it's a reasonable price so i just used this simple formula pain agitation solution so i decided i put up a quick little ad for it and i ended up getting 45 responses and we rented the place within two days what we so, wanted to rent out your place <laughs> it's two days. just with the simple like we posted five or six ads before this with just like hoping that the pictures would sell using hope marketing saying, okay, maybe, maybe somebody will come see these pictures, think they're really nice and maybe they'll buy them or maybe they'll rent it. Sorry. And as soon as I used this formula, my inbox was exploding. Like I could have literally sold these leads to realtors in Vancouver. I was getting wow. so okay. So then that yeah, opened the light. You have to break down this formula. Now I think you have to break down this formula. You know how many yeah. people are trying to, actually just sell something or put something online and it doesn't even sell or nobody even looks at it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, what, what was the formula you used? Yeah, it's the pass formula. It'll be inside the book. If you want to grab this after, just comment below in the comments and I'll drop it. Um, so it's the problem, 
the agitation and the solution. So the problem was that rent is high in Vancouver and the vacancy rate is very low. The agitation, basically you piss them off and you let them know that, you know, rent is high. Um, you're going to pay a lot of money for a really small shitty space, basically. And the solution is that our place is big. The rent's not that bad. And it's a really nice place near a bunch of great locations. Inquire right away because this is going to go fast. So you give them the problem, you give them the agitation, the solution. And it was literally maybe four, four or five sentences. It wasn't a really long, it wasn't a really long book whatsoever, or like it wasn't a really long post whatsoever, but it just, I knew what their problem was. I knew what would agitate them. And I knew that what I had was a solution for them. So problem, agitation, solution. And then, you yeah. know, you know, you know what, actually, let's yeah. get somebody who is actually live right now. Yep. and see if we can utilize your uh, principle to actually solve their problem so that we yep. can actually go in. Uh, Rebecca, if you are there, maybe we can go in with, with your scenario um, because you really want this book. There is a formula here, problem, agitation, and solution. Can you just yep. type in, Rebecca, what it is that you, you do and what we can solve right now live on air with Troy? and see if we can put it together, right? Let's do yeah, it. Yes, it just, it, I think, it I think it light for me of how, of how powerful writing can be. And that was really the point over the past, well, it's been about three or four months since we went out to that part that I've really been focusing a lot more on writing and knowing that there's extreme power behind it. I mean, I've known how to write for quite some time, but not in a way that using formulas and not in a way of actually communicating my target audience in that way. So I think that was the hugest takeaway for me. It just opened my eyes to like, I got 45 leads from a free ad that I posted. And it's like, <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, that's just, it goes to show though, effective communication, it written in a proper manner. Like if I were to actually calculate what those leads were worth, like, I mean, we were renting the place for about 1800 bucks a month. So if I were to actually resell those, somebody yeah. so you want to like, calculate that by 12 that's that's like that's eighty one thousand dollars like that's that's huge if you really look at the grand scheme of it and it was a free ad wow and and you rented the place in a couple of days and it worked out like that i really i really want to put this to 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 play let me see who is on and has said something uh yeah. michelle says i would like to read your book we want somebody who wants the formula to be done live right now so that we can actually show that the formula works. Uh, Troy would like to dissect your message um, using the problem, agitation, and solution um, theory. So can you type it in the comments there if you want to do, because that would be the best thing that could happen. Show that you can help people by actually show, uh, helping them live and i would think um that that is possible um, yeah michelle if you're there let's um let's hear what it is that you um what that that what it is that you've got okay there we go michelle says how would you promote a life health monitor a live help promote a life health monitor a okay. life health monitor yeah Okay, a life health monitor. So, well, I'm. You, you, it has to start with the okay, research. Okay. Like, what, I need to know more about the life health monitor. Like, what is what is it? What's the pain that it solves? All right. Let's say one of those uh, Fitbits. I think uh, it's such as a fitness watch. That's what it says there. Okay. Like a fitness so I, watch. I, yeah. I'm. This is going to be rough off the top of my head. Like, don't take this for face value because it needs research behind it. But say, right. okay, you have, a, you have a Fitbit or whatever. I think the problem yep. with that they're having trouble staying on track with their health goals. Their agitation uh -huh. is that their energy is dropping. You know, maybe this might be a little edgy, but, you know, maybe their wife or husband doesn't find them sexy anymore. They have low energy. And the solution is, <laughs> the solution is, the solution is get your Fitbit to actually keep <laughs> you on track. I mean, that might be a little edgy and risky. But just to give you a rough idea about it, that it's like they're pissed off because they can't get their they can't get their their health goals met. They have trouble staying consistent. I mean, the majority of people 
have a big problem staying consistent with their health. So I mean, the right. bit, the solution is wear this on your wrist. It'll let you know when you need to do things or whatever it be. Like, I think that's a rough, rough understanding of it. But I mean, the agitation just like gets them like you tell the problem better than they can tell it themselves. Like you let them know that like what the actual pain is. Cause like when you say things that nobody else has said to them before, they're going to get taken back and they might get a little pissed off. But at the same time too, if it's the truth, you're here to actually help them. You're not yeah. saying it. Just, you're not saying it just to be a jerk. You're saying it because you actually know their pain and you want to help them. I think that's a big thing. A lot of people want to play it safe and they want to be, oh, uh, I don't want to offend somebody or I don't want to hit a trigger button. Obviously, you don't want to blatantly trigger somebody and piss them off. But if what you're selling is a good product and it can actually help somebody, then it's your ethical duty to get it in their hand. Right. Okay. So I understand what, you, what you're probably saying there. It's... It's amazing how you put it all together live. <laughs> Do know your stuff. And everybody, download this book right now. Type in Troy's book. Um, yeah. Writing I'll that drop, actually I'll sells. I'll drop the link in the comments. Oh, okay. The link is in the comments. All right. Yeah. Okay. It has to be, I mean, the agitation has to be, at what cost are they... Um, if they keep doing what they're doing, what are they losing or what are they actually costing their life and how much is it costing them not to get that Fitbit? You know what I mean? Are yeah. they losing their husband? Are they losing, um, you know, their relationships? All of those are costs that they don't want to uh, forgo if they don't just buy that $200 watch or something like that, right? I'm really yeah. hoping that uh, Michelle... Okay. And Rebecca says, um, problem, stop not getting along, solution, get back to meditate, uh, mediate, sorry, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> she needs to mediate. So I think, um, yes, Rebecca is a, is a mediator extraordinaire, and she needs to figure out how to, you know, get her message out there, and, um, you know, to the, to the right kind of people that actually need it, and she has specified here, as you can see, that stuff okay. are not getting along. So you might be like a boss or something like that. How can she bring her message out to the business owner um, mm -hmm. when stuff are not getting along for her to come in? Her solution is to mediate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think, like I said, with all these, I'm just going really off the top of my head. I don't know in depth what your market is until I really actually understand it deeper. But I mean, so what I'm reading here is the staff's not getting along, the agitation's lost productivity. Um, get them back. You said meditate, like you're getting them to meditate. No, 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 no. She mediates. She mediates, Medi like goes in between. Yeah, sorry, my my English is bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, okay. Um, I don't know what the product is in particular, but like, so say, you know, are you tired of your staff not getting along and fighting? Question mark. Yeah, I am. It sucks. So agitation. You know, when your staff's not getting along and they're fighting all the time you're losing money. If you're the boss, you're losing money every single time that your staff is getting in a fight, not getting along. You need them to work together as a team. So that's the solution. You know, we offer X, Y, and Z getting back to mediate and you can come in, you can talk to us. We'll figure out how to get a proper company culture working together. So everybody gets along X, Y, and Z. I mean, that's a rough time frame, but I mean, even, even what she wrote like there is pretty much perfect. Just a little elaborating on it. I think the pain of lost productivity is as a business owner, I'm losing money. And like, that's painful right. to me. Like I'm don't, I don't want to fucking lose money. Oh, sorry. Pardon my language. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> I forgot to press the button. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, a business cool. owner, you don't want to lose money. Like that's the big pain for them. And they're, they're pretty pissed off if they're losing money. So I think, you know, the problem is, yeah, staff fighting all the time. The agitation is losing money because staff is fighting and you're losing productivity. And the solution is hiring me today because I know an actual solution that will help them. Hmm. Okay. I'm also thinking of a theory because that actually would agitate somebody if they're going to be losing money and that's the last thing they need. So you can probably find out how much 
are the billable hours for Absolutely. those um, employees. And let's uh, say for, you know, figuratively speaking, they work 100 hours, those people, and if 50 hours of them, they are no. actually fighting. So that means half of productivity is gone, okay? So the yeah. company is paying bills, I mean, is paying wages to people that are not. so if that person is probably paying uh twenty thousand in bills that means he's losing ten thousand all yeah. right that means that person is losing ten thousand um, dollars yeah. and in in lost you know productivity time and 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 um work so essentially yeah. what rebecca really needs to do is i want you to save ten thousand by yeah. investing maybe one thousand with me so you yeah. can save ten thousand yeah. dollars you know and then, and then it's a no-brainer too. Like that's the thing that we we're talking right. about the building about an irresistible offer. If it's a no-brainer and it's completely like it makes perfect sense, then they're stupid mm. to not go with it if you can highlight the actual problem. So big right. that it's I'm stupid to not do this. Like I'm hemorrhaging ten grand a month, but today you can fix that for a thousand dollars. For a thousand dollars, yeah. Okay. It's just like um, a television. You should ask yourself this question. How much does your TV cost? No, yeah. some people would think it costs you $1,000 or it costs you $500. It doesn't cost you that. It costs <laughs> you whatever money you're not making by watching it. So let's yeah. say you're supposed to make 200000 a year. That television is costing you. Ooh, that's a good analogy. <laughs> that's powerful. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You be ladies, this is my show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen all the girls are like we're gonna speak to Troy I brought him in here come on guys <laughs> you know, if you guys are getting value from this uh, it would be super great if you could share this I think we could do a couple more lives I don't know how many how much more time you got there Prosper but uh, if you're getting value <laughs> oh, right. let's uh, let's get it spread out and let's get a couple more people in the hot seat I, I see so. I see so. Um, you know what? We can put in an extra fifteen minutes. Um, if there's people that are actually wanting to put be put in the hot seat, because I think Rebecca has been answered. So Rebecca says mediation facilitated conflict resolution process equal service. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. You she got a message down packed. It's just maybe maybe we needed a bit of validation and a few analogies here and there. If you can show somebody how much they're losing, um, Rebecca, by not yep. engaging in the services, it becomes a no-brainer, all right? Yeah. So if you can show them what it's costing them to not engage in your services, I think that would work out perfectly. So yep. in your book that people are already climbing all over each other to grab, and if you haven't, yep. just type in Troy's book at the bottom there, and I think uh, the link will be... I think there's a way that we can, um, how do you do it to to make it stick? I, there's, there's too much technology uh, going on here. Okay. Top here. I, I, was having, yeah. uh, I was having DNS issues all morning getting this set up. I put it in our chat, but I think only you can put it up top. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's, it's good. It's your live, so pin it up top. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me see if we cannot pin it up at the top. Right. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, um, um, this one is left. This one is left, but that's pretty cool. Ah, okay. Paul says, "How do you how do you best reach your target audience if they were athletes?" Um, that's Paul Weeks. Paul, if you're still on, can you just uh, let us know if you're still on 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 the show so that we can answer your question? Okay. Um, let me in the meantime, while he's while he's figuring out, um. Yeah, can you can you can we t double on this one? He says, "How do you best reach your target audience if they were athletes?" So I think he's like a personal trainer. So go in as a personal trainer. How would you help a personal trainer get the uh, problem, agitation, and then the solution? Okay. Well, um, I I couldn't hear the entire question, but I know you said it around personal trainer. Um, so I think a really big thing is. is Obviously, just think about the same thing with the Fitbit, right? Like people are having trouble hitting their fitness goals. People are having trouble getting to where they want to go. So I think that's the problem. Like they know that they want to get fit because this person's already 
you don't want to try and convert somebody that doesn't want to get fit because then it's just going to be a miserable client anyways. You want to find somebody that already, they, ha they have the desire to be fit. You can't manufacture desire. Desire is already built. You can only choose. And they already have the desire to become fit. The agitation for them being fit, it's the same thing. You know, their body doesn't look as good as it looked when they were 25 or whatever it be, or 20 X, Y, and Z. You know, they they feel that their wife may be losing a track taking care of themselves. Their energy levels are dropping. They're not as productive anymore. They're always tired. And, you know, for the low low fee of X, Y, and Z, you know, today you can work with me and we'll actually get you on the right track. And obviously social proof and case studies and before and after pictures. Um, but, I mean, that just gives you – a rough idea and outline it's it's a very similar for the fitbit as it would be to a personal trainer right so you really want to figure out exactly where this person is missing out on their happiness and then just deliver that as a solution in your in your in your copy right yeah well if you, if you think about it comparing the fitbit to the personal trainer they're they just have different solutions all right all it is we all we all want to fix to our problem, but there's many different solutions to our problem. There's not one true path that will get you the solution that you true desire. There's multiple paths that you can take. So like, and I think it's really important as what I was saying at the beginning, um, this is from Breakthrough Advertising, but desire cannot be created. It can only be channeled. Desire is already in existence. Desire is something that exists from our core of something that we actually want and to you just have to channel the desires through your writing to actually communicate them that that's something that they want and i think the agitation really channels the desire of like you know the agitation of them wanting their what life to look at them like they did when they were 25 or whatever it be but they have a deep down desire to be more attractive they want to be loved deeper sure. they want to actually like, if that makes sense, like, you can go really, really deep with this stuff. But uh, I think that really just gives you a, a bird's eye view. Right. There's a, what do you call it? Uh, you remember when um, Henry Ford, I don't know if you know if, if this was his statement, but I think when Henry Ford created the T, um, the T series of his cars, he yeah. said, yeah, he mentioned the statement like, if I had asked people what they wanted, they mm -hmm. would have wanted a faster horse. So naturally, mm -hmm. that means people don't quite know what they want. But if you can explain mm -hmm. or teach them to know what they want. So that's sort of mm -hmm. what you're explaining, right? That you can't really force the desire. But if you think about what you just said, too, with the, them wanting the faster horse, mm -hmm. they, their desire is just to transport somewhere faster. Right. They didn't even know that the sitting in a luxury car or whatever it be was there until it became. But they had a desire inside them to get somewhere a lot quicker and a lot cleaner, no maybe a lot steeper. The desire was still there, but now with the car, it was just channeled differently. Right stuff. Okay. All right, man. I think uh, we, we would put this to a close. Um, we had fun. I've had fun. I don't know about you. Everybody else had fun. And I think you were a bit like of that. a hit with the ladies, huh? <laughs> 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 All right, it's guys. So hey, I, I think um, today's uh, show was absolutely amazing. Troy, thank you. Uh, process and also if you haven't signed uh, if you haven't uh, requested for Troy's book uh, writing what sells it's really going to help you with a lot of clarity around your messaging it's going to give you a lot of creation content and also so much confidence when you reach out to your target audience and as you all know guys everybody's out here to try and get customers everybody's out here to try and get you know uh, people that are going to buy from you your communication is going to help them know, like, and trust you. And um, if you also download the book, ladies, you get a chance to have a chat with Troy. You know what I mean? I saw you all climbing all over each other um, when he jumped online. I've never had 
I've never had anybody watching for more than 10 minutes. Thank you so much, uh, Troy. You've, 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 okay. <laughs> you've, you've one thing brightened up my newsfeed today. <laughs> one thing to add with what you just said, like the book does have a lot of formulas, but like who you are is prosper. Like you're an entertaining guy, you're a fun guy, you're funny. And I think really injecting your personality into your writing is really important. Because you can be plain and boring with these formulas. The psychology really works. But you also right. have to connect your fun and like you're enjoying these different things. If not, it just doesn't seem genuine to the person. Like when we, if you think when you're writing and you write, read it back to yourself, the person's speaking it to themselves in their head when they're reading. Right. So it's right. like they're picking right. up the tonality. They're picking up the little nuances. So I think that's a really important thing when you grab a book click the link in the comments grab the book but like really keep in mind that your personality really shines through your writing quite frequently Firstly, at the end of the day uh, um we we are all going to help you start scale and grow your business feel free to connect with troy as soon as we finish this um he's chilling out in bali having a good time so if he's not looking at his novel and sipping on a pina colada, I think he'll be more than happy to help you out with your copy and everything else. <laughs> you know, you know, I used to think that all those um, laptop lifestyle adverts, they were just, um, you know, common on Facebook, but it looks like it's real. All right, you live in the dream. You live in my dream. It's funny you say that, though, because a lot of people will tell you that you can live on the beach with a laptop, but I just want you to know that if you take your – laptop to the beach it will melt <laughs> it is not only will it melt <laughs> sending it and also water and all that stuff right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right man hopefully hopefully your launch is all going to go well and regarding um you know what you're going to do next and how you're helping people in your whole mission i really hope people got value from this uh, I myself was so entertained. I can't thank you so much for being on the show. Even though yep. it's a bit fuzzy or whatever, but I think there's been so much value. A lot of people got so much help. So you want to watch it all the way to the back. And thank you guys so much for trusting the process. Troy, let's say goodbye to these people. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> man. Thank you. Live long and prosper. Thanks so much, man. Nice one. <laughs>